Happy Tuesday, Nate's Live Talk. What's up? You animals. Love you guys. Please like, share, subscribe. Got a funky story today. Some good, some bad. When I tell these stories, another thing, when they're of doing bad shit and stuff like that, I'm not glorifying them. They're in hope someone will see them and it will scare them and not to do these things or make them feel like they're not alone if they're going through them things um i had a really good morning i went and grabbed some a check that was owed to me while i'm there um i know this is the person i'm gonna shout out well i grabbed the check um my buddy that i used to that i worked with hits me up and he's like oh i got something come see me all right i go see him dude got he gave me a friggin creative studio like stand and setup and i just want to thank you chris ah that's so thoughtful of you man and he podcasts and stuff him and brand and uh i don't have it set up yet obviously but um i will be setting it up i am so grateful for that and he just had twins, so congratulations, Chris, on the twins. I am so grateful for having a friend and a shop steward like you. And um, he's going to do some with me eventually, I'm really hoping, because he's a funny, funny kid. And I know he's got some stories and stuff. And uh, very, he's got great energy, listens to music in the morning like me. One of us would always have our radio playing, or I mean our... Um, would have our uh, phone playing music in the morning and stuff trying to you know be upbeat and all that good good stuff but Chris Sar, uh, thank you so much and uh, I really appreciate that it was so so sweet of you I know things are tough right now and money's tight it couldn't you know to do something like that very special so I appreciate it more than it, this looks I'm sure all right, let's get our thoughts about us. Let's get our notes about us. All right. So this was like around the year of the Patriots. Perfect season that they blew when they lost to the Giants. Heartbreaking. Ugh. Makes me sick. I am not going to use anyone's names in this. Um out of protection for everyone but myself so a friend of mine's moving down to Florida with his girl and um, it was during the time when I was using and um, his mom and stepfather had a beautiful home down there beautiful beautiful home and they invited me they told me I could go down there I didn't have much going on in Rhode Island um, the economy was really screwed up. It's when Bush was in office Before Ob Obama got in and it was just I should have done more research before I end if you ever go to move to Florida It is not what you think. I don't know if it's I wasn't living a good life when I moved down there You know, so I can't give you I can only give you it from the perspective of someone that was using um, painkillers heavily 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 but um, the economy was really screwed up at the time. It was hard to find a job. Where we went was out in the middle of the country in a swampy area. There was nothing to do there. Really, like, not much industry. And it was just it was a bad idea for me to go for many, many reasons. Many reasons. I just wanted to get away. The dysfunction in my house has always, always troubled me. My dysfunction, my, my, um, my drug use and, and stuff, and uh, the drinking in the house and shit, and it just always ends up boiling over. And I just like, was sick of getting thrown out all the time. Whether I was partying too much, they were partying too much. Uh, I don't know how many times I came home to like get your shit and go. I remember sitting up at the bus stops one day and just not knowing what to do with a bag of shit. Uh, like walking around with a fucking luggage. 
because we couldn't get along. It pisses me off looking back at it, you know. But that's why I say the things I say in these videos. But um, yeah, I moved down to Florida with my buddy, thinking I'm gonna turn my life around, thinking everything's gonna be great. Had a nice ride down. We were we were using on the ride down and shit. I'm thinking it's gonna be all sunshine and rainbows, Florida. Yeah, we're gonna get jobs. We're gonna fucking straighten out. Everything's gonna turn around, and it did not go as planned. I did not go as planned, but I enjoyed some things while I was out there. They had a big piece of property, a big beautiful piece of property, and um, I would cut the grass. They had a big ride in mower. They had dogs. It was a beautiful place to be if I could have found a job and just straightened out. I think not being able to find a, a good job making money really hindered us. I think we might have had a shot if we could find could have found work. But, like, the hourly wage wasn't as much down there. It was just tough. Really, if you're looking into relocating, do your, do your research. Do it. It's very important. I was looking into relocating through the post office. And um, we just, believe it or not, it sounds crazy and everything. Everyone bitches about Rhode Island, but I love it here. I love it. Like, you know, you got the ocean. You got a lot of cool stuff here. It's not all bad. And uh, other states aren't what you think they are. Trust me. Uh, and you can't run from your problems. That's a valuable lesson in this. Um, but, yeah, I like cutting the grass down there. I learned to fry a turkey down there. And his stepdad was a really smart guy. He was literally like a rocket scientist. He was an engineer. Very, very smart guy. Worked in the aerospace industry. Very, very intelligent. He helped. I helped him change, like, I think, clutch plates in his holly and shit. And I would always pick his brain. Very, very, very intelligent guy. Had military service. If he ever sees this, thank you for your service. Thank you for opening your home to me. And um, I'm sorry that things went the way they did. Um, but I had to get out of there. And this story will be about why I had to get out of there. But we're down there. We're fucking off, not doing the right thing. We get a job. We, we went to like a labor-ready place to get jobs. And uh, we got some job. It was like every day you had to go to the dump through... Um, waste management and it was a horrible job it was like boring and in, in the hot sun and you're on this big trash mountain this big mountain of trash and your job was to pick up trash rolling off the mountain of trash you know what i mean it wasn't a, it was a man-made mountain you know what i mean rolling off the landfill and it was not fun and the guy that like ran it you could tell he was just not a nice guy like uh, the supervisor, and I go to this little Spanish lady, and I'm like, we did it for two days, and I'm like, how do you do this every day? How? And she's like, I cry myself to sleep every night, and she, I felt so bad for her. She's like welling up. I'm like, this is awful. Fuck this. So then we're like, we go back one the next day. I go, I'm not going to the dump no more. Fuck that. That place sucks, man. It's stupid. The people are not nice to us there. It's just not, I can do, I'm more capable than that. And God bless that woman, man, for doing that stuff to make a living for a family. I just, I, I would have went nuts doing that. And they gave us a job moving someone. And he was a lawyer or a DA. One or the other. I can't remember exactly. But they give us this job to help move him. And uh, we hit it off. He had a younger wife that was attractive and he was an older man and he was influential in like taking down the mob in Philly and Pennsylvania and shit. Very, very smart guy, but I think he had dementia or was starting to set in and stuff. And you could tell the woman just fucking, she used and abused this guy. You could tell the way she talked, she talked to him like a piece of crap. She didn't, came and go, went as much as she want. She had all fancy clothes and designer shit. Like you could just tell. This poor guy was being used at that point, at that point in his life anyway. But um, we helped move him that day. And we were only getting paid like, I don't even think we were getting, I think we were getting $10 an hour. 
and I'm like, fuck this, man, right? But when you work for a place like that, the company gets charges them like double to triple what you're, they're, they're actually like paying you. So if I'm getting paid $10, that company was probably making tw at least 20, probably 25 to 30 in all honesty. So I go to the fucking lady and the dude, me and my friend, and I go, hey, why don't you give us fucking 20 a piece? And it'll say, you're not, you know what I mean? You're saving money. Cool, do it, this, that, and the other thing. We've moved everything. This fucking house had more shit and more food and more <laughs> more designer clothes. And <laughs> we're moving the bed, right? I find this huge freaking woman's toy underneath it. Ugh. And a plastic bag all stuck together. Fucking gross. Oh, she had furs and this and that. Ugh. It was fucking, I, uh, <laughs> yuck, I'll never fucking forget it, gross, I don't care how good looking she was, it was fucking gross, and it like fucking had, my buddy turns it on, the fucking thing is just like, <laughs> oh, fucking ridiculous, man, oh, that same buddy I found another one with, fucking doing a job like that somewhere else too. Fucking God. Moving people, finding toys. Or fucking going to grab something for someone and finding the toys. Only happens to me. But we moved the detector and lawyer. We found that. What the fuck? We ended up staying friendly with him for a while. But now we're out of work again. And we're using. And this and that. So we go get it. We go apply to this job. RJ Gate is it's a fucking like. The redneck version of Applebee's. Stay. It's like the redneck version of Applebee's, dude. They cook gator and shit there. I fucking bullshit the guy. I tell him I'm a short order cook. I go, I'll fucking do fry side, whatever. I know how to fry shit. It's golden brown and it floats. It's, it's done. Plus, it's got all timers and shit. So, I wasn't fucking stupid. My poor buddy gets caught on the fucking grill having to cook steaks and chops and fucking everything else all fucking order but we did it and we did it we did it well man the fucking place went out of business after we fucking uh after i left and he quit believe it or not we fucking figured it out very quickly and uh i met some cool people working there and shit i was dating a chick that worked there and that lived in this little like fucking meth fucking spot in the outskirts of town really weird Fucking Florida is like another fucking... Florida is like another fucking universe. Everyone, if you get out into the fucking real Florida, and we, we go to fucking, like, go check out football games and shit down there, dude, it gets intense. Friday night lights are a real fucking thing. There was this town called Pahokee, and they would play Bell Glades in the game. They fucking had, like, 50 NFL players come out of the both those schools, I want to say. A lot of them. Like, San Antonio Holmes is from down there. Fred Taylor. We went to the fucking games and shit. And you drive through and it's a ghetto in the middle of sugarcane. And the fucking kids down there would chase uh, rabbits to get faster. There's a thing. There was a thing on ESPN about it. And it interviewed all the people and shit and this and that. But there were some bad towns down there that you wouldn't expect. That you just roll up on and it's like, what the fuck? It looks like you're in Haiti. But, like bad and i've been to haiti i know and um just fucking florida is a different place if you go to move anywhere make sure you do your research make sure of it make sure of it so we're working at gators and shit and the the addiction's getting worse fucking for all of us and fucking it gets to the point i'm the only one working and, oh, excuse me, let me rewind. We get the opportunity to buy a, like, uh, buy a house off of one of the neighbors. And we're like, fuck yeah. And looking back at it, if we held it together, it would have been a fucking great, great. I wouldn't fucking have to work no more if that deal worked out. But it was a nice little home, brand new. They wanted like fucking low $90,000 for it. Two bedroom, garage, nice little fucking place. Nice start of home fucking it was perfect for us the payments weren't high and um we're like yeah fuck yeah and then 
the wheels start to fall off with the addiction and shit. And, uh, fucking, oh, man. Um, I'm still working at RJ Gators. My buddy fucking quit. He had it with the shit. They would give him a hard time, too, behind that fucking grill. And the people, people aren't fucking like, it's not like it is around here where people move. Like, when you work with people down there, they're not as fast. Like, they don't actually, they don't like us down there because we move too fucking fast. When I fished on boats down there, they didn't like me either because I moved too fucking fast. They're like, slow down, Yankee, goddamn. They don't like it. They frown upon it because it's what the fuck. Making them look bad. Uh, but yeah, we end up getting in too deep and fucking, now he don't want to work at that place. I'm working there, but I fucking hate it. Doing too many opiates. And, um, we're like hurting for money. We gotta pay the fucking bills. And we gotta pay the rent. And we're, we're fucking, when you do opiates, you get sick if you don't have them. Violently sick. We gotta find a way to score. So, the person I went down there with, fucking, finds a score we go do it and I think he gave pe the, the guy fucking fake pills or not enough or it was something like that we fucked the guy over we fucking they're chasing us we fucking or they didn't realize until after one or the other it was a long time ago we get to the house we pull in the garage fucking lock everything up this that and the other thing fucking I know they're coming there's one thing I fucking hated doing as a druggie and I didn't do it a lot. And I used to fucking tell friends and shit. I hated doing it. I've done it. I'm guilty of it. But I hated doing it. I didn't like doing it. I've only done it a handful of times, I want to say, seriously. And fucking... Dude, they come back to the house. They're fucking pissed. You can hear them. And there's not just one or two. There's a lot of them. I'm in a fucking town I don't know that well. I don't know many people. Florida's fucking got a lot of guns. A lot of guns. I don't have a fucking gun on me. They're all at his fucking family's house. They come to the fucking house, dude. Slamming, knocking, banging. I'm like, what the fuck? We gotta answer the door, man. But they're not gonna fucking go. All right? Fuck it. I go, fuck it. I open the fucking door, there's a girl there. And I'm like, I come outside, there's fucking like six or seven of them, dude. I grab a fucking palm branch. Palm branches are deadly. Deadly, deadly, deadly. And if you see a palm tree where it falls off, not where the, the leaves are, the other side of it is like a saw blade, dude, from hell. It will maim you. I grab one of them, I'm like, come on, mother effers, let's do this. Whatever, rah, 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 rah. And I'm acting, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'm playing stupid, right? They weren't fucking stupid. They know, right? They fucking smash my car up and screw. We'll be back, motherfuckers. Someone's getting shot tonight. I go, holy shit, I'm gonna fucking, this is fucking nuts, right? And the neighbors are out there watching. I'm out there by myself. Everyone's in the fucking house, you know? That's why I say my fucking loyalty and shit just fucking that's why I fucking love hard man I look out I try to look out for people but I how stupid was that fucking not even a thousand dollars worth of fucking pills I'm willing to lose my life over so I don't feel fucking so I don't feel like shit do not do drugs do not do not please I'm begging you people do not I could have got, I already told one story about me getting jumped and I didn't do anything wrong. I'm lucky that didn't cost me my life. Very lucky. And they fucking threatened to, right? I was up all night waiting for them to come by. The fucking cops come. I make up a bullshit fucking story. We all make up a bullshit story what happened. This, that, and the other thing. And the fucking cops know what's going on, but they can't charge anyone because they can't find anything. And the other people aren't saying anything. And fucking... The next day, with no one working but me, 
and all that shit going on. I fucking packed my shit and left. I said, fuck this. This is too much. And I left. Maybe it makes me a pussy. I don't know, but I wasn't fucking going out for... I just, I knew I was in over my head. It's a stupid fucking thing. Should have just stayed sick and got sober. But, um... And my buddy fucking stayed down there. And he went through some fucking very rough times down there. Very, very rough times. He fucking almost got killed driving in his fucking truck. I don't know. I don't think he was under the influence. But it was a late night and he was working. And he fucking, the truck went off the road into a fucking swamp. Or like culvert, whatever you want to say. When it rains down there, it rains heavy. And the fucking sides of the fucking state roads flood. And he fell asleep at the fucking wheel or something. Or lost control. And they had to fucking put a... Oh, fucking... I can only imagine how frightening that must have been for him. Fucking gators and snakes and cotton mouse and fucking... Ugh, crawling out of a fucking truck. Scary. Scary. Don't do drugs. If you go to move, do your fucking resources. Because if I, if I had... If, if I wasn't a druggie... And I had a good fucking normal home and I hadn't fucked up and my parents hadn't fucked up I wouldn't have wanted to run out of there and furthermore if I was doing what I was supposed to be in an adult I wouldn't have lived at home Things we do matter people Things we do matter they do I hope young people see this or someone older shows someone and fucking I'm very very lucky very lucky very fucking lucky I did not get hurt by those people and they didn't if I had to leave I knew I'm like it wasn't my style I always kind of worked I mean I fucking have burnt a few people and shit but that was a big one and I just I didn't want to do it the whole fucking time but I didn't we didn't have a choice we didn't think we had a choice and I don't blame I don't blame him for that. I fucking, you know what I mean. It's not a thing like that. It's just stupidity. Stupid things that come through that shit. Oh, and one good thing from that story too. I'm at the casino down there, right? And fucking, it's like Seminole Casino or something it's called. And it's out in the middle of fucking nowhere, dude. And I'm out there having a cigarette with my buddy. And it's fucking, we're out by the dumpster and shit. And I'm talking to so he would play Hold'em for hours and hours and hours. He was a very good Hold'em player. Fucking, me and him sat at Foxwoods one night, fucking, on New Year's Eve. He was up like three grand and I'm begging him to fucking leave. Take the money, let's go. And he got into a fucking vendetta with someone and gave it all back. Fucking, but very good Hold'em player. Very, very good Hold'em player. His family was good to me when I was younger. Fucking, um... But we're smoking a cigarette outside that fucking casino and this little fucking kitty comes up out of nowhere. Cute, cute, cute kitty. Right? And I'm like, what's up, junkyard kitty? And he fucking starts dying. He thought it was hilarious. His fucking, his mom thought it was hilarious. God rest her soul. His fucking girl, the whole family. My buddy Nine I met down there fucking thought it was, it was a funny thing. Little tiny cat jumps out of the fucking dumpster to come hang with us and I fucking named I go hey what's up junkyard kitty right that fucking cat was such a good cat such a good cat we go to leave that night and I'm like we're talking about junkyard kitty and how we met her and shit and like if we see junkyard kitty can we take her home and his mom's like are you fucking kidding me and like yeah let's take junkyard kitty home come on like, we're not gonna find the fucking cat I'm like junkyard kitty come on junkyard kitty we're in the fucking car Junkyard Kitty, you don't gotta live in the dumpster no more. The fucking cat comes and jumps out of the dumpster into the fucking car, dude. Took Junkyard Kitty home. <laughs> I fucking swear. Dude, fucking funny. Oh, Junkyard Kitty. I think a snake got her and shit after I left, my friend said. Rest in peace, Junkyard Kitty. Rest in peace to my friend's mom. And, uh, yeah. Another wild story at Nate's Live Talk. Fucking unreal, dumb shit. What drugs do to you? What drugs do to you? And I can't tell, when I tell a lot of these stories, I can't tell every gory detail. 
No, it, it can make people look bad. I don't want to do that. Worse than they, you know. But yeah, fucking burning drug deal is a bad idea. They fucking, and I fucking stayed up all night, man. All fucking night, scared. All night, scared. I don't know what fucking, why they never came back, but I thank the Lord for it. The universe. I was fucking scared. They smashed my car up. Fucking, my car was outside. Fucking drove back to Rhode Island and fucking like, I want to say like 22 hours. I fucking had, had it. Had it. Had it. And I got my shit under control for a while here. Yeah, like, got it together and then I fucking relapsed. But it's a story for another day. But yeah, the story of.